people often portray themselves as victims and carry a victim spirit. Mm. Why me? This whole guy, everything I had was just me. Often hurt people, they cry racism, sexism, all kinds of, you know, phobias. And, and often they use the word it's unjust or unfair to describe the way that they are being treated, even if there's no truth to this. Amen. Though we realize that racism does happen in sense of it does happen. You, you, are you with me so far? Amen. Hi. My name's Angel Falcon, and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you will be blessed. He went specifically to a specific verse 
And in the midst of everybody, all of the theologians of their time, all of the religious leaders in their time, he specifically found the place, the Bible says, found the place where, in Isaiah, where he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he has sent me to heal the broken heart. Say that with me, broken heart. To proclaim liberty to those that are captive, to recover and recovery of sight to those that are blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And then when he said that, he closed the book, and he gave it back to the attendant, sat down, and all the eyes were on him, on the synagogues were fixed on him. And then he began to say, Today this scripture verse is fulfilled in your hearing. Part of the church's desire in the heart of God is to, uh, we're gonna I'm going to focus just on the, you know, he has sent me to mend the broken heart. We'll talk about that. Sometimes we don't even know, we don't understand. But God intent for the church is to come together and to deal with some 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 things. There are some things that we see that are superficial. We can actually see because physically we can see some of the bad things in your life. But there are other things that are so deeply hidden in your hearts that you don't see. And it is God's desire for, for the church to get together to be prayerful. You know, the Bible tells us, here, here's another scripture verse that I want to share with you. Just, you don't need to even turn there, but, but in, in Ezekiel, the Spirit of God inspired this prophet Ezekiel to write this. And it's so true. Amen. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take out that heart of stone. flesh, give you a part of flesh. And what we see here is that God knows that they, sometimes we go through things in life that really hurt us, man. Hurt us deeply. And sometimes we're unaware of it. It is no secret. I've shared with you my story. You know, but I remember there, there was things, certain way I was feeling and I didn't like because here I am, I'm seeking God, but there were certain things I was going through in, early on in my, in my walk that I just, I, I didn't understand. I said, why, why, why do I get so, why does this trigger me? You ever had those things that, I mean, there's certain things. I mean, I can, I can pretty much tolerate a lot, but there's certain things, triggers, that really rouse me up and takes me out of my, 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 Steal my peace, I'm telling you. And I remember going to God, why, why, why? And I remember God taking me back to a time as I, I was a kid. I was still in the single digits. I wasn't even a teenager. Things that I seen that affected how I do this. Things I witnessed. Issues. Issues of the heart that God had to deal with. And got me saved, delivered me, but then there were issues. Because, because of the hurt, because of what I witnessed, it affected on how I dealt with people. And, so, and sometimes those closest to me. Now, is it, are you quiet because it was cold outside? <laughs> <laughs> So, God's, God knows in His wisdom, He knows that His desire is to mend our brokenness. Stuff. Stuff we go through. Stuff we gotta let go because if we don't learn to let go, they will haunt us. We carry it. You ever heard of that term, generational curse? <laughs> that follow families? 
so true. <coughs> so very true. And so here God is, you know, I mean, he is, he is looking to create an environment. The church's mission is to mend the broken heart, to allow the Spirit of God, the warring of God's Word, to come in to tug us. You know, sometimes you come to church and, you, and you're blessed by the message. But sometimes, sometimes, the message hits us. It hits. It hits us. It hits us in a place where, eh, simply because God wants to deal with it, deal with the deep issues, deeper issues. I thank God, and you know, sometimes, you know, you know I read this article by Dr. Joseph Matera. Now, he's a theologian, a teacher, a tremendous teacher of the word. He's a pastor's pastor. He oversees a lot of churches in New York City, uh, has written extensive books. Um, um, specifically now, here I am, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing, um, uh, I committed this month to the topic of the purpose of the church in light of God. You know, you have to understand why we come here. Um, I, you know, uh, in Hebrews, the Bible tells us, forsake not the assembling of yourself, because God has a purpose when we assemble ourselves. And I've addressed a lot of different things concerning uh, the need and the, the healthiness of that environment when we come together and help each other out, because that's what the church should be doing. The church, as a church member, you know, we come to receive the Word of God, the engrafted Word of God, but then we go home and apply it. And But we also have a part in the overall work here, right? You have to feel, I, I realize sometimes people, some people come to church, but they're not connected to church. And I don't know why. But here, I read an article by, by, by Dr. Batero, and he shared, it really went along, it touched something that, that has been in my heart, because, you know, again, in, in God's desire to, to mend our brokenness, to bring healing. You know, that's why sometimes, you know, you know, you know there's those good moments, and then sometimes there's those bad moments, and, and you don't know what happened, why you got there, but there are things that, that God wants to deal deeply with some of the issues of our heart. And this article talks about believers who, though they're in church, oftentimes they don't allow the Spirit of God to work in, in those areas of their broken. And then he, he shares some points that really hit home, that really, you know, with my uh, 40 years of experience as a believer, 23 years experience as a full-time pastor, you know, I realized, I said, man, there is a wealth of truth. To brokenness. Issues of the heart. Things that God yearns. That's why sometimes, you know, you know, it's so critical to learn to be quiet before God. Amen? The, the Bible uh, reminds us that when you draw near to God, amen, He draws near to you. And then, then the exchange that happens help, is helpful for us. There are things, the Bible says that as we behold the glory of God as in a mirror, amen, we begin to get transformed. God begins to deal with our fears, our doubts, our, our you know, what we go to. Are you following me so far? And so the article really started, and I, I don't normally do this, but I'm going to read certain things because it captured, then I'll elaborate a little bit, because it does capture, you know, what God is looking to do in all our lives. In all our lives. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe some of us are not going through some as serious things. But I know one thing, if you're breathing, and you're living, and your blood is pumping, and you, you have a pulse, you know, there's stuff that comes up. And it begins, the, the, this article was saying, he says, there's an old adage that says, hurt people, hurt people. Hurt people, hurt people. 
That is so true. Now listen to this. It is well known that those who have been emotionally damaged tend to inflict their hurt and pain on other people. For example, a large percentage of those who have been sexually abused become abusers of others. Those who have suffered under alcoholic parents often themselves cause their future family to suffer because of their drunkenness as well. As well. And then he says that until we as a church deal with the whole person, As we see in 1 Thessalonians 5.3, which says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. There's a, you know, and look at what it says. It says that he may, that, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we, we have to work um, um, though, though we're gifted and we're growing in some areas, sometimes it's those deeper issues that we need God to come and heal. He came to mend the broken heart. Here's some, now, now this is where it's going to get good. If, if you know, Try to keep this up. The following are common traits of hurt people that hurt people display in their interaction to one another. Now, if you've been involved in church, you have a family, you would, you, you would understand where he's coming from. He said, the first thing he says is hurt people transfer their inner anger onto their families and close friends. Often those around them become the recipients of harsh tones. You ever, you ever had a bad day and you came and you took it out of people that didn't have nothing to do with your bad day? Hmm? Sometimes we just do it unconsciously. You know, I mean, you know, uh, hurt. So I mean, when we're angry about things, angry, uh, you know, angry about what mom and dad couldn't do or angry about broken relationships and when we're angry about a million one thing sometimes that just hardens our hearts and that's what we're talking about we're talking about that the church environment is that place where god looks to mend our brokenness but until we allow god to do that's why we have to allow the spirit of god the more we allow the spirit of god to work in our hearts the more he's able to deal with those rooted issues in our lives and so he goes on and he says, you know, um, um, we, we, we all, almost transfer, people who are hurting and angry, they have a tendency of just, just being angry all the time and, and you're snipping, you know, and you know, attack you with words. It, here's another thing. Hurt people interpret every word spoken to them through the prism of their own pain. <clears throat> Because of their pain, ordinary words are often misinterpreted to mean something negative towards them. How true is that? I often says, you know, I says, you know, oh, why do you say that? I says, what? How could you sort it that way? I meant it this way. I meant it innocently. They took it as an attack. Why? That's how they see things. I'm going to trust that this silence is just, God is just touching something here. Amen. Because the church has to help you get past those. That's, that's our job. Amen. To cause you to grow up and come to the full maturity of those things that God has called for his children. And so, you know, uh, you know they misinterpret, you know, negative, you know, something negative towards them. Uh, because of this, they are extremely sensitive and they act out of pain instead of reality. Mm. Mm. People in interpret every action through the prison of their pain. Their emotional pain causes them to suspect wrong motives. You know, uh, yeah, why, why, why are you being so nice? <laughs> <laughs> My talk is about, come on now. Mm. They, 
everybody be quiet. No one's gonna say nothing. Here's something else. The fourth. Hurt people often portray themselves as victims and carry a victim spirit. Mm. Why me? This old guy. Everything that happened to me. Often hurt people. They cry racism, sexism, all kinds of, you know, phobias. And, and often they use the word it's unjust or unfair to describe the way that they are being treated, even if there's no truth to this. Amen. Though we realize that racism does happen in sense of evil. Does happen. You, you, are you with me so far? Yeah. Mm. So hurt people, you know, uh, have a hard time entering into trusting relationship. Because they're suspect all the time. Her people often carry around a suspicious spirit. Mm. <laughs> I'm just letting that settle in. <laughs> mm. Mm, yeah. uh -huh. And God wants <coughs> y'all ever went to the doctor and sometimes there are things doctors have to do that make you feel so uncomfortable and you so dislike but you have to do it amen you gotta take it a church sometimes you gotta take some stuff hurt people often alienate others and then wonder why no one's there for them. <laughs> Talk about church. That's all the stuff happening in the church. It's happening in your home. It's happening around your job. It's happening everywhere. But God is looking to mend that brokenness. Man, and there's a lot of things that the Word of God tells us about. That's why he, he challenges us. Got, got to get to a place where you can love your enemy. Not only love your enemy, but if he's thirsty, give him to drink. If he's hungry, give him some food. Bless God. I don't know. God's working with me with that. <laughs> Continue to hurt the ones they love and need the most with their self-destructive behavior, that attitude, of, you know, that defense mechanism. <clears throat> hurt people often are often frustrated and depressed because their past pain continues to spill over into their present consciousness. Isn't that why God teaches us letting go? The past, the whole, all things to come through. Until you allow to get past all, you, that's why God says you gotta forgive those who hurt you. For with the same measure that you give, shall be measured back to you. That's what the word says. Can you can you let go of some stuff? Sometimes we're going through a cycle in life, beloved, and the windows of heaven aren't open for you because you're holding on. To resentment, you're holding on to offense, you're holding on to unforgiveness. Nothing stops the hand of God more quickly than unforgiveness. Because here you are, you're approaching God and you're expecting God to forgive all your drama and issues that you ain't willing to do for somebody else. to deal with our brokenness, he has to talk about it. You have to allow him to, to show you some stuff. And the, and the Word of God does that. And I'm telling you, the Word of God, just, just read as you read it, you, you know. But almost like the Spirit of God. You can read and read and read, and all of a sudden, there's something that the Spirit of God wants you to, to, to really pay attention to, and it almost jumps out of that page and slaps you right across the chair. That's right. Then you read it and you kind of shrug it off, and then you watch it. Uh, uh, somebody quotes it. So and then you see it in the in the commercial. Then you see you you. Wait. 
In many instances, and we're talking about again, oftentimes hurt people are frustrated and depressed. Um, and it just it just consumes their consciousness. It's, they, it's, it almost infects everything. In many instances, they may not even be aware of why they are continually frustrated or depressed because they have coped with pain by uh, co compartmentalizing it with layers of it and of other things over time. They just they just try and bury it. situation with people in which there was a, a, a gross overreaction to a word that I spoke or an action that I was that I have taken. Although I was shocked and thought this reaction was out of left field, it was really the person responding to accumulation of years of hurt and pain that could not help but spill over in various situations. That's why you ever had, you know, you think you know, it's not a big deal, man. There's a few more really good ones. But you see that God is looking to bring, even dig deep. So this is why it's so vitally for us to enter into the spirit of worship. Because I believe that in the spirit of worship, we just lay down all our guards and we allow God to love us. But if we're going through stuff, if we're feeling always rejected, if we're feeling there's reasons for that, they are rooted issues that God is looking to, 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 to free you from. He comes to set the captives free. He reminds us, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And yet, sometimes, beloved, you know, again, God, the purpose for the church is to liberate us at every level of our lives. Get rid of some of all our low self-esteem, our insecurities, you know, and, and why did this happen to me? I have seen, beloved, listen, I have seen, I have seen individuals so hurt, so hurt, you know, and, and what was done against them was, was wrong, scripturally wrong, but, you know, and it wasn't their fault, but then because of, they didn't give it to God, it just poisoned everything about their lives. Now, they don't allow anybody to get close. <laughs> Hi, this concludes uh, today's message. Uh, let us know how you were challenged by it, or whether you have any questions or not. We're here to serve you. And our desire is for you to walk in the fullness of God's blessings for your life. God's promises are yea and amen. They're for us to obtain by faith. Hope to see you next week as the word of God continues to minister to our every need. God bless you. You have a great day.